Rogers every Friday night. Champ here. I'm all about having fun. You know, get a couple of cocktails in me, start a fire in someone's kitchen, maybe go to SeaWorld, take my pants off. Anyway, I've become kind of famous for my signature catchphrase, whammy, as in Gene Tennis at the play, and whammy. David Koshner. David, thank Hello, you so Michael. much for joining us. Hey, hey, how are you, Mike? I am having a good time. How are you doing today? I'm good. You don't mind if I refer to you as Big Red, do you? I guess not. I don't know where the red comes from. Well, I thought this was this the Big Red Seminar. Do I have it wrong? Oh, uh, you're thinking of, yeah, we have the Big Red and Barbacoa Fest. It's uh, eating a barbecue cowhead and drinking Big Red soda in San Antonio every year, but this is not it. Oh, well, then I'm going to log off then. I was here for the ribs. Uh, all right. Yeah. Oh, dang it. How's everybody doing? Great big whammy for everybody in attendance. Whammy. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it, gang. How many do we have today, Michael? A few hundred so far. A few hundred. How many are sleeping? Well, probably none right now, thanks to you. Uh, I got, well, I wouldn't undo sleep. Undo my, uh, my insomnia cure. Ah, Michael, I wouldn't sleep through year. I mean, for, through you. I do know you snore, and I'm not going to let them know how I know that. That's none of their business. We are private. Listen, so let me just go over a few tips for your lawyers. Uh, and, uh, question. At the end of today's seminar, or my participation in it, will then I be a lawyer? No. No. Okay. Am I being deposed right now? Nope. Very good. So I'm not on trial. All right. Will I be receiving any minor surgeries during this Zoom call? I hope not. This is so far very disappointing for me. <laughs> it has happened that I have, you know, gone through these procedures and done a little surgery with the help of someone who's guiding me on the other end. Um, let me just go over, if you don't mind, Mike, a few talking points of my own just yeah. to help en enhance the meeting and reinforce some of the ideas that these lawyers need to take down. Do they all have a piece of paper and, and pen? Uh, I bet they will now. So I don't know. I mean, I don't, hell, we got to have some rules when we put these things together. Make sure everyone's got a golf pencil and a three by five card. That's the way we run these things. All right. Now, Michael, I listen, I don't want to contradict you on any of your approach to some of these stuff, but no visuals, a lot of math. Require the jury to always be doing math in longhand. No calculators. Why is that? It just makes it harder for them. You know, it's kind of <laughs> like you got to give them the old misdirection. Uh, also, um, have you ever employed some of these tactics with uh, with uh, jurors? Because I know it's this this week is about talking to the jury. Correct. That's right. That's what you guys do. You address jurors. That's what we try to do. Okay, so do you? Uh, it, I'm just trying to give you some helpful tips in terms of what to use in your arsenal. Have you guys ever thought of threatening? Oh yeah. Oh, you have. I thought about it. Yeah. I've oh, done it. but I've you don't about it a lot of times. Yeah. So let me get this. Mike, you seem like an ethical guy. Yeah. It's a real, it's a real uh, drawback in my line of business. It's going to be a hindrance. Here's the yeah. thing. I, I personally am devoid of ethics, morality, and any sense of character. You should come work as a testifying witness then. <laughs> as a testifying witness. Yeah. Uh, uh, I've got no no uh, propensity for truth, Mike. Yeah, we deal with that a lot in our cases. <laughs> uh, the other thing in your toolbox you might want to throw in is a thing called the good old-fashioned bribe. Yeah, I've, I've had some friends that tried that. Unfortunately, they got a- Have you really? Yeah, they got free room and board from the federal government for a number yeah, of years. Well, uh, it's free to them. We're paying. Yeah, I guess we're paying for it. Yeah. Am I right? They don't seem very appreciative of it either. No, they 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 get in there like this is not the bed I'm used to. Oh, uh, the spouse. Yeah. <laughs> the arranged marriage, as it as it were. So I'll just need everybody on your seminar to type in their uh, passcodes and uh, PIN numbers. Into uh, or send it there in an email to me, uh, just to make sure we get some proper vetting. All right. Does Where that do sound? Them? Oh, just to uh, uh, Delisi will send an email out, and I'll get everyone's passwords to their emails and their handles. 
Instagram accounts, but most importantly, their pins for their bank accounts. Yeah, don't forget the investment accounts too. You want to make thank sure- you, Thank you, thank you. And not to right. worry, not to worry, gang. This is all stuff we're going to use for private use to enrich your, your accounts. Yeah, I would like to get your advice on my investments. Maybe if I just gave you all my passwords. Michael, you sound to me like the smartest man in the room. You know, ever since I dealt with that guy from Nigeria, uh, where I realized I have this inheritance coming, I've realized my, my, how much. My, my understanding is that you were the first man that responded, what was that, 25 years ago on yeah. a dial-up line? I'm waiting. I'm waiting for my money. Any day now, he says it's coming. You, you invest. I'm going to stop doing this crap as soon as my, my chip comes in. I, you've managed to succeed the entire time. Now, I'm a bit confused by something earlier in the seminar. And I, I don't hurt easily, Michael. And I don't know if this was included as just a way of, I don't know, taking a dig at my feelings. Are you still doing hair follicle testing, Michael? We are, but you've got enough. It doesn't matter where the hair comes from, anywhere in the head. Okay. Anywhere in the head or the body, Michael? Is that, is that the case? Uh, you know, for sanitation standards, not anywhere on the body, no. Oh, you, know, you don't know where this head's been, Michael. <laughs> Am I a juror now? I'd like to hear the case. I think I've already had, I already have the judgment. Oh, really? What's the judgment? Guilty. Uh-oh. <laughs> what? That's actually good, actually. <laughs> wow, that's where we're going after him, so yeah. If I was a juror, I would stand up within the first couple of minutes and say, I like that guy. I believe him. Can we go home? <laughs> Yeah. I got to tell you, Mike, from where I'm sitting, you're just easy to like. If I was a juror, I would just kind of spread around. I like this guy the best. Yeah. I wish you were a juror. And not, and not too quiet a whisper. Now yeah. th this, this Cowan guy's got it going. Yeah. It's not always my experience, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so where are we about halfway through the day? Yeah. We're a little more than halfway through the day. Three, three hours of a six hour Sam, right? I think we're a little bit more than that. I think we're more like four hours. I'm not sure. Michael, I said Sam like I know what I'm talking about. A lot of shorthand. You know, three hours into our Sam. <laughs> I love all the shorthands. So, Mike, can I get a, a larger shot? Do you have a lot of visuals today? Yes. Can we? Can I widen? Can I get a couple? Of, uh, oh, I, don't leave me, Michael. I'm scared. Oh, I'm lonely. Right. Okay, well, come on with me. Come on. I'm a, Michael, I'm a mess without you. Okay, no, we, we got to stay together. I can't hug I you, but we can scent. look at the same screen. I miss your musk. These are some nice viz. Can I get some shorthand for visuals, please? Viz. Put up the yeah. viz, please. Uh, Delisi, can I get the viz? Can I get the viz on camera one? Distracted driving. Viz. Michael, what's it called when you're distracted talking? Because that's all I am. <laughs> they won't allow me, they won't allow me into any trucker's truck because I'm I'm more distracting than anything anything else in it. Yep. How many cases are you guys working at any one time? I mean, in the nation, is this is this a daily thing? Unfortunately, there's people getting killed every day. Um, and the number one uh, offender is what? Just fatigue? You know, I think fatigue, and it was fatigue. I think distraction is more and more. Look, it sucks to be out on the road away yeah. from people, and it's boring. And so people are just either on their phone talking or playing with the phone the, the whole time and then just uh, wiping people out. Hey, not to be goofy, but I mean, when phones came along, I know the CB kind of went away. Do you, in your experience with the C, and I don't know how many of these kids, as I like to call them on our Zoom today, know what a CB radio is. Follow Michael back, please, whoever's on camera. Michael, do I have the power to fire people right now? Absolutely. All right, camera guy. We're going we're gonna to break a finger. Anyway, uh, are, I can impose punishment. Punishment. Uh, oh, absolutely. Uh, Delisi's got a crowbar and a baseball bat. She always does, doesn't she? Yeah. It's First time I met Delisi, she had a crowbar. I thought it was yeah. like an attachment to her hand, but no, she was just holding it. I um, was to get you off me. <laughs> uh, in the days of the CB radio, was there less distraction, do you think? You know, the thing about CB is you could talk and you still have right. to hold it. And you had to think of all the creative, you know, rubber ducky. Uh, right different nicknames and stuff, but you couldn't watch it. I mean, you, you couldn't look exactly. at porn on a CB radio. Um, oh my God. Is that a thing? That's a thing. Guys are driving down the road, watching porn. They are. Good Lord. They that's one, one hand on the wheel and one hand on the stick. Uh, 
how, how, Michael, how many how many gears are they going through? I don't know, but they go quickly. <laughs> if we're lucky. Oh my god. Is that is that an that incredible? is a thing. That is and so uh, that has been the cause of many an accident. There have been more than one person killed because of someone operating oh, the wrong yeah. Oh my god. Wow. Yeah, that's what they were saying. Do 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 how many trucks have a built-in breathalyzer? Do, is that kind of a standard thing now? No, not at all. It, you know, that's only like on a passenger vehicle. If you get a DWI, you have like an occupation, uh, trucks. If you have the DWI, you're not supposed to be driving it. Oh, at all? They don't have an, okay, yeah, okay. They don't have I didn't know if that might need to be a standard preventative measure. I can't believe that they haven't asked me to come in and just give more and more suggestions on how to be a, a better trucker. Yeah, you're probably more qualified than a lot of people making the, the regs in our current administration. Well, Michael, I haven't found one thing that I've been qualified so far. That includes parenting, and I have five kids, so you can understand that uh, I've put a lot of people at peril. <laughs> yeah. What else do we have on our agenda today? Well, we're going to start talking about how to uh, try the case, uh, the picking juries, making arguments, uh, cross-examining people. So every, all the people you're talking to today don't know how to do even that. <laughs> uh, they do. I'm just, uh, I'm just sharing the little bit I've learned over the years. I don't know. I've seen a lot of glazed over looks like they're like, what? We got to try cases. Yeah. Well, a lot of people don't want to, they just take the money and run. Oh, they or plus the, the thing to do is never the, is the best end game. Let's don't go to trial. Uh, it depends on the situation. I just look at, you know, what are the, what are the odds of doing better? If you do go to trial, going to trial is more fun. More uh, fun. It is. It's fun to go to trial. I mean, you get to get in there and fight and have fun yeah. and show off and, uh, but it's just if they're offering your client a lot of money, you might do worse or lose at trial. That's the problem with trials. You sometimes come in second place, and you know the lawyer gets to go try the next case. It really sucks the client only gets one shot. Uh, but a lot of times, you know, they, these insurance companies are so cheap, and uh, they're relying on people's fear, so they make really tiny offers. They have no idea how much money the insurance companies actually have. Oh, it's insane! It's, it's so insane. Bad. I mean, when they were talking about that give back during quarantine, it's like, wait a minute. How much money do you guys have exactly? Because we're only talking about a couple of months and you're already screaming, well, maybe we'll give you something back. Yeah. Especially all snake. Yep. <laughs> That's a mini headed pariah as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I think I've had at least 50 trials against all state because they just uh, they try to make it so expensive uh, that people just give up. You know, everybody likes to make jokes about lawyers, but the quiet demon, of course, are the insurance companies. You just gained 200 fans again. So <laughs> if, 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 you, if people were not already your fan from all your great work of that, you just gained fans right then and there. Yeah. <laughs> lawyers, you know, that, that old terrible joke about uh, lawyers at the bottom of the ocean is a good start. You know, uh, there's got to be a better one for, what is it, the insurance adjuster or the broker? What's, who's the person? Yeah, the adjuster, yeah. The adjuster. Yeah. I'd like to be the chiropractor that takes the adjusting, that does the adjusting <laughs> to the adjuster. Oh, that'd be fun. With Delisi's crowbar. <laughs> she's going to have, she's going to, she's not going to have that as a brand. <laughs> Delisi's crowbar. crowbar. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Michael, have you ever been deposed? Yes, I have. How many times? Three or four. What were you wearing? On the outside? <laughs> no, uh, I would wear a shirt, a tie, a jacket, khakis. I'm just trying to act like I'm deposing you now. Absolutely. Do you remember what you were wearing on the day of the deposition? Tell us your dreams, please. Did you have a nice dream last night, Michael? I have no idea whether I had a dream last night or not. I worked till about three in the morning getting ready for this, and then I just closed my eyes and woke up, and I was ready to go. Did you really? Three in the morning? What is what is the thing that is most important today that everybody walks away with? If there is one, to do the work, do the work. You got to you got you got to do the work. You've got to figure out what the rules are. You got to get the sources. You've got to apply them. You've got to fill them. You just got to. You know, it's true, it. Michael. It's the thing I tell my kids. Nobody wants to do the the hard work, right? I was having my son put together this little weight rack to hold dumbbells, right? He's 21. He didn't want to do it, right? I could see it. Why should he? 
I don't want to do this. I don't want to use it. I said, it's not about that. It's about doing the work. And I know that, you know, it's an Allen wrench he's got to use. He doesn't know what an Allen wrench is. Half the people on a Zoom call now are typing in Allen wrench, wondering what that is. <laughs> and you got to use this. And then there's a, you know, I've got to teach him what a boxed end wrench is and an open end wrench. And now there's people are typing that in today and they don't care. And my son doesn't <laughs> care, but you have to. You must yep. do the things that you don't want to do. When you can find comfort or get, when you can get, zealous and have zeal and have the desire for the boredom of the work. Because every time you do that, you get better. Have you read uh, Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell? Yes, I sure have. The 10,000 hour rule. 10,000 hours. And then you're what? A master. Yep. A master. And it really is about the work and all those corny things that people say, the work will serve you. You know, you be its master, and then you will quickly be master that thing. Don't you believe that? Absolutely. That's why I will never succeed, Michael. <laughs> nah, right. Halfway through the work, I always just wake up and go, what's happening? I, I bet you put in a lot of rehearsal. <laughs> it looks like it's spontaneous. So. Well, if running my mouth is work, then I put in a lot of work. <laughs> well, but it is true. It's as simple as that. Yeah, the thing about why don't people do the work in yeah, your they're experience? They're scared, they're lazy. Uh, there you go. It, one, one of the things, those two, those two things can be overcome. If you're scared, that's something that's not real and you've put in your head, correct? Absolutely. And if you're scared, it's because you don't know if you have the answer, correct? Yeah, I think, I think it's more, in our crowd, I think it's more fear than laziness, to be honest with you. Okay. Here's the thing I try to tell myself and my kids. There is always an answer. I believe there's always an answer, and the joy is in finding it. Now, I, do, I do agree there's great joy in finding the answer and doing the work. It's, a, it's the fun thing. And so when it's the hard work, and when you're in the middle of it, and you're looking at that pile, and you don't want to do it, and it's the old saying, you've heard the expression, one bird at a time? Yep. Yep. And the other one I love is uh, don't, don't try to boil the ocean. You heard that one? Uh, I haven't. That's a good one, though. Isn't that a good one? You can't do it yep. all at once. One thing at but a time. It's all doable. And fear doesn't exist until we put it into our heads. Yep. And as you can clearly tell, I can barely think, so I'm never afraid. <laughs> uh, am I going to see you at home later tonight? Or am I not supposed uh, to bring that up in front of the crowd? If you bring a bottle of vodka and a couple of hypnol, I'm all yours. <laughs> Wait, one bottle is, is a slow night? <laughs> Hey, brother, I appreciate you, and I understand this is a free webinar, correct? Absolutely. God bless you, man. God bless you for doing that. And it's just in the giving and the, the idea of, it. like I said, the answers are there. The joy is in finding them. And in attending something like this, you can find something. I hope so. And Thank um, you so much for doing us. Yeah. Thank you. Now, I want to see if I can strike a little fear in you and you know you take this however you might so it's Callan rodriguez and peacock correct that's right okay now i'm going to start all right and again so i don't want to scare you but i'm going to start a i'm going to put my own shingle out today and i don't i'm just going to say i'm a lawyer now i understand you barely passed your bar exams my understanding correct uh, that's what i heard yeah <laughs> i heard number one that year that was a long time ago but yeah okay so you're Blind a squirrel gets a nut every now and then. You're self-effacing, self-deprecating. I'll <laughs> say that. I don't know if I've ever gotten above a 70 on a test, Michael. I don't know if that makes you uh, nervous. Um, but I want to do two things. I want to either A, offer to join your firm as uh, on part of the masthead. Is that a yes or a no? That's a definite yes. Oh, my God. You just, yeah, we're going to put you just, in our commercials. We're gonna... You just decrease the value of your firm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, God bless you. This has been fun. If I can just say this, Michael Cowan at the plate and whammy, whammy. <laughs> I love it, brother. Thank you so much. It was awesome to have you join us. I really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. A pleasure. And uh, have a great day, brother.